Provoking your redemptive rights, part three. God said, as many as received him to them, gave you power to become the sons of God. John 1, 12. You can never become what you have not received. It is what you believe from God's word you become it. Whatever you don't believe, you can never become. In Isaiah chapter 28, verse 22 says, Now therefore be ye not mockers. Lest your bounds be made strong. For I have heard from the Lord, God of hosts, a consumption even a determined upon the whole earth. If you mock the acts of God, you end up a mocker. There are people living in this church who don't believe that what God is doing here is real. A very touching story. Men of God came to me and said, Sir, in 2013 and 2014, men of God said to me, You are not walking with the power of God. And woke me up. And said, God spoke that this man is using other means to do miracles. And I agreed with the person. That the moment I agreed with the person, calamities began to befall two of us. We lost two people in one week. And God said to me, go and tell him you are wrong. He said, from that time I have not had peace, according to his words. I said, well, I don't know. It's you that knows. Say, please forgive me. I say, I, I didn't know, so there's no point. I'm not holding anything against you already. Now, so, because he mocked the art of God, right? You know what I'm now? And God struck. I don't know who is mocking what God is doing in your life. God will strike now. There are people in this church who don't believe that what God is doing here is real. They say, don't mind all this thing they are teaching. You know, they are nonsense. They all just say they are talking is rubbish. You can't mock the works of God and not end up a mocker. But I'm sure you will not mock the works of God here. Yeah. Are you get what I'm saying now? One thing with blasphemy is that if you blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, you will never be forgiven. You will never. That one, there are things you do that you forgive. If you blaspheme against, someone will get up to say, "Don't mind him; he's using some other means." I, you can never be forgiven. Because God, at that time, you are not talking about me. You are talking about the Holy Spirit that is walking through me. And anyone mocking your God will end up in mockery. Yeah. Shout a better amen. Yeah. We are talking about our redemptive rights in Christ. In Revelation chapter 5, verse 12, the Bible declares, shall we read together in Revelation 5, 12, saying with a loud voice, what is the lamb that was slain to receive what? Power. Riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and what? This is the summary of our redemptive right. Everything redemption is summarized here. But one of our redemptive rights we're talking about this hour is riches. Is what? Riches. Every child of God is entitled to all the seven. If you have revelation of God's word. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, 7 to 9 and verse 18. In verse 7, And the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills. A land of wheat and barley, and vines, and fig trees, and pomegranates, a land of olive oil, oil, olive, and what? Honey. And verse 9. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without what? Disgustness. Is that true? Thou shalt not lack anything. So there's a place you be in Christ you don't lack. How many want to come to that point? He said, a land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. Now in verse 18, of that same scripture, but I shall remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth the power of the world, Get well. that he may establish covenant which is sworn to thy fathers as it is this day. 
The power to get wealth is accessible, but by the word of God. But by the what? Peter was fishing in Luke chapter 5, 3 to 5. He caught no fish. And Jesus met him and said, do you have anything? He said, no. He said, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And then there and then, things began to turn. Somebody's story will change right now. Yeah. Hear this, people of God. What will make you rich is not your work. I said God's word, the blessing of the Lord, it make it rich. Not the oil company you work. Not your profession. The blessing of the Lord. So what makes rich is not the kind of job you do. It's the blessing of the Lord. Proverbs 10, 22. It is what makes rich, not, oh, if I work in an oil company, oh, if I live in this country. Now hear this. He said, God is no respecter of persons. As 10, 34, 35. But in every nation, in every one, including your nation, there's no disadvantaged nation. <laughs> Please listen. Your, the country you are free from is not disadvantaged. In every nation, who is ever fear? I said, I said the Bible is no more true, but the Bible is true. You see, there's no difference between the Greek and the Jew. Those are two scriptures that brought me out and changed my perspective to prosperity. Romans 10, verse 12. Moreover, the prophet of the earth is for what? It's for all. Ecclesiastes 5, verse 9. The word of God is your passport to kingdom wealth. Joshua 1, 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of their mouth. That shall be said, the If you must make your way prosperous, just go to the word of God. Just go to the what? He said, observe to do all that's written therein. You will make your own way prosperous and that you have what? Good success. So here. So it is time to reach out to God for a change of position by covenant practice. By covenant what? He said, when the Lord turned again our captive, like that dream. When? That means it's certain. So captivity is turnable. Captivity is what? Psalm 126. He said, our mouth was filled with laughter. Our mouth. is like a dream to us. So there's a way you will turn your captivity and then you look like a dream. One to six. He said, they do that so in tears. I don't enjoy. You that go for with them, weeping. I'm bearing precious seed. I'm dying come again with sheep in his hands. God is simply saying to you, look, your captivity is turnable. It's what? If you follow the covenant principles, are you getting what God is saying here? Say, so no matter the hardship, you can turn it around if you follow the principles of God. Say so here. So in this service, we're looking at how to connect with the riches of God. How to connect with the what? Because it's your covenant right. Is your redemptive right. Then why are you not enjoying it? Let's listen carefully. People of God, please don't be religious. Jesus who knew no sin became sin for us. Is that true? How many believe that he became sin that you and me may enjoy righteousness? You believe that? Raise your hand if you believe that Jesus became sin for us. You believe that? You, how many of you believe that Jesus became sin that you may enjoy righteousness? You believe that one? Why? Because it was preached to you that he died for your sins. True? Hello. You believe that? Why you believe that part of the Bible? Is the part of the word you believe that benefits you? Let me show you something. Second Corinthians 9, verse 8. It became sin for you to enjoy righteousness. That, why don't you take this part? Why do you take only one? He said it became a sin that you enjoy righteousness. It became poor that you and I be rich. Is it your Bible? Then why don't you believe this one? Why do you believe only the other one? To be poor is an anathema in the body of Christ. Say so here. You are saying redemption is not real. To, to not say that righteousness is not real, you are saying the disease why Jesus died is fake. Is that not true? Do you believe righteousness is real? Because it became so to be poor is against scriptures. Because Jesus died that you may not remain in poverty. So why will you accept righteousness and not accept prosperity? And anything you don't accept will never produce in your life. I accepted health. He took my sickness. I accepted that I became, he took my poverty. If you don't accept it, you remain there. 
accepted that he became righteous, he took my sins. Is that true? Are you hearing me? So if you don't accept this part of the Bible, as I said, I may not believe to him, they gave you what? Power. What you don't believe, you can never be empowered to become. So how to connect with the riches of God? Number one, be born again. Be what? That's where the journey starts. Because you must receive John 1, 12. If you are not born again, John 3, 3, 6, to, and 8, to 8. Then number two, be obedient. Be what? Be obedient. If you want to connect to redemptive riches, be obedient. Be what? Okay. He said, if you be willing to obedient, shall you the good of the land. Isaiah 1, 19. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Job 36, verse 11. A. Be obedient on other number two. Be obedient in tithing. Be obedient in what? He said, I am the Lord, I change not. Malachi 3, verse 6. He said, return unto me and I will return unto you. <laughs> he said, where shall we return? He said, in tithes and what? In offerings. So until you return, it is not your turn. He said, bring all your tithes, my son, and be meeting my house and put me not here with. If I will not open the windows of what? Heaven. And pour you out the blood, there will be no room enough to receive it. Malachi 3 and verse 10. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. I will make sure the devil does not touch your business. That shall see that you be called a delight on right. So I hear. Titan is 10% of your income back to God. In Hebrews chapter 7, verse 8, it's a man that died, he received, but he that lived, he received it in heaven. Now listen carefully. I know many of you hear all of things on social media and everywhere. It's only tight to hear. You don't hear about that. Don't commit sin. Don't follow woman. Don't follow man. You don't hear that one. Not let tight to go here. Listen carefully. I don't care any man of God that preached it is wrong. Ask me why. According to the man of God, according to the word of God. The word and man of God, which one will you take? I'm preaching the word. Even if I tell you something wrong, don't take it. Don't say according to man of God. No, say according to the word of God. The man of God said it's wrong. The word of God said it's right. Let every man be wrong and God be true. God's word says pay tight. Man of God said don't pay. Who will you believe? Stay there. I don't care the man of God is wrong. This Bible said bring all your tight. The man of God said don't bring your tithe. Who will you believe now? Make your choice. Okay, don't pay tithe. See if your life will go forward. I'm telling you what I know. B. Be obedient and walking in divine direction. Be obedient in what? Be obedient. I said be obedient and walking in divine direction. They were fishing in John chapter 21. And Jesus said, Sons, have you any meat? They said, No. He said, Cast your net on the right side. In John 5, 21, 5, and 6. So they were on the wrong side. God will always guide you to the path of profiting. Are you hearing me? In Isaiah chapter 48, 17 and 21. Mm? Everybody, I want to read this. Read together. Thus saith the Lord. The Redeemer, the Holy One of who? He said, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee. So there's a way you need to go to. Listen carefully. I read verse 21. 21, everybody look at 21 very well. And they tested not when he led them through hell. How can desert bring water? Desert, because he was one who led them. He caused the waters to flow out of the rock for them. He cleaved the rock also and the waters gushed out. So even things are hard and God is leading you, things will be well with you. And I pray things get well with you. Listen, when you walk by divine direction, luck ends. There is a place for everyone to prosper in the body of Christ. Stop depending on your relations. Stop begging people in power. Stop writing notes to everyone. Find where you belong and you prosper. Do you hear what I said? 
Are you hearing me, sir? Everybody has a place to prosper. All you need to do is to find out where God has placed you. If you are supposed to be in Port Harcourt and you go to Lagos, because everybody's probably in Lagos, you'll be broke in Lagos. If you're supposed to be in America and you go to Canada, you'll be broke. Everybody has a place. Either the place may be in human beings or it's in a location. But it is when you are in the right location, you get your own allocation. And when you are in the right position, no opposition can stop you. Everybody that's a child of God has what? A place. If things are not working, you are in the wrong place. Life story here, I was teaching, and my wife knows him, and all Bismarck knows the young man. He used to grind pepper. I've not seen him for some time. And I was teaching on divine direction, a, a pepper grinder. And he said, he heard me said from the land that there's a place for you. So he said, God, where is my place? And God told him, move your machine to this place in the market. He said, he heard clearly, move your machine. Grind. It was only grinding pepper. And he moved his machine to there. He became a multi busted Built a house from grinding of machine. He said, everything torn. He built a house in one year. From he said, he had a voice. Move your machine to this part of the market. He said, he busted. Money was coming left and right. Which means he was in the wrong place before. Everybody has a place. Prosperity is when you are in the place God has sent you. So stop running from country to country. Stop running from job to job. Stop running from business to business. Find out what God wants you to do. So I hear. And I pray today, things will go well with you in the name of Jesus. See, be a sacrificial giver. Be a what? Be a sacrificial giver. In Genesis 22, 1 to 18, Abraham gave sacrifice of his son Isaac. <laughs> and God said, by myself have I sworn. In 16 and 17 of that same chapter. God swore by himself after Abraham gave Isaac. He said, the ram you're looking for is in a ticket, turn back. So a place of sacrifice is a place of revelation. He said, don't worry yourself. Everything you're looking for, lay a sacrifice and God will bring it to you. And today God will bring it to you. Yeah. Every time you give a quality seed to God, it brings a harvest to you that nobody can ever challenge. The ram was health. There are miracles you're looking for. Just one offering is enough to bring it to you. May your own answer right now. Yeah. Have you not heard people say, I gave glory to sacrifice? This happened. I gave glory to sacrifice. This happened. Your own will soon happen. He said, because that obeyed my voice. In verse 18, that was what God told Abraham. And as long as this eight minute, sit them and have it shall not work. Genesis 822. And Solomon gave the first king three, three to four and thirteen. And Solomon gave a kind of offering that was heavy. And God said, Hey, Solomon, this offering is big. Now you will never beg. I was reading about Solomon. That man. Kids, oh my God. For one day, what Solomon used to eat for one day is what they used to eat in palace of five governments. That's put heavyweight civilized country like five presidents we eat. That's what Solomon used to eat one day. They just kill rams in hundreds. Kill cows in hundreds. His spoon was gold. His teacup was gold. Aye. He had thousands, you know, horsemen in thousands, hundreds of horses. When the man is coming out, no way to move. That guy was rich. And he said, greater than Solomon is here. You will beat him in wealth. Yeah. But that man gave up. That man did what? Before he entered that realm of wealth. Without giving, you can never prosper in this kingdom. Number three. Oh, we are not confused. Is anyone confused? Refuse to be confused. Number one, be born. Number two, be obedient. 
Number three, be a worker. Number three, be what? If you want to the redemptive life of riches, be a worker. Work is godly. The first thing God gave man is work. You'll be surprised. First thing God gave man is what? It's not wife God gave man first. The first thing God ever gave to man is work. Genesis 2, 8, 15, and 16. And the Lord planted a garden in his world in where? Listen, listen. Almighty God did not speak garden he planted to tell you that there's no shortcut. God said, let there be what? When he came to the garden, he said he planted, which means God himself walked. Hey, read your Bible. And the Lord God planted, not the Lord God spoke garden. He's showing us an example that if you don't walk, nothing will walk. And the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden. Did you hear that? And there he put the man whom he had formed. He was telling man, say, look, are you see me? I didn't speak garden, I planted it so you to walk. Then look at verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to do what? He said, now me have planted. You walk to, to dress it and keep it. <laughs> oh, verse 16. And Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the tree and that and so on. And then verse 18. Look at what he says here. He said, it is not good for a man to be alone. I'll make him help me. After walk, before wife came. So no idle man should marry. It's against scriptures. You must walk first before you marry. They don't marry to walk. You walk to marry. First thing Adam did was to walk. Then wife came. Any man not walking, don't marry him. It's not scriptural. It's against the Bible. Any man carrying briefcase is a contractor. <laughs> Tell him what, which contract are you doing? My friend, walk. This is where many miss it. Many give, but they don't walk. See a the man diligent in his business. He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. Job 22, verse 29. Walk generates wealth. Walk generates what? Wealth. It is those who walk that wealth comes to. Anywhere people don't walk, nothing will walk. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4, it said, It becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent make it rich. So here. Work is the platform for covenant blessings. Now, in Deuteronomy 28, 13 and 14, And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. We all know that one. Is that not true? Verse 14. So, if you look at, it says, and that shall not go aside from any other works. Look at the other one, and I command this day to the right or the left and to do them. I command you today to do something. To do what? I was studying and I was shocked to see something in Revelation 3 and verse 8. Let me show you something I'll baffle you. For I know thy works. For I know what? I know thy works, and I've said before the word, and no man can what? Shut. So your works is the meeting place where God blesses you, where no devil can shut your door. So if you are not walking, the doors will not be open. For I know thy works, and behold, so it is while you're walking, you say, God, no devil should stop me from prospering. So if you are not walking, you cannot bind the devil. I come again. For I know thy works, and I've said before, so the open doors will not be open until you are walking. Whatsoever you do, I shall what? I know thy works. As a result of your works, I've said before, they are an open door. Jesus said, I must walk. What did he say? I must walk. John 9, verse 4. And John 5, verse 17, he said, Jesus answered them, My father walketh, he that too, and I what? There are two mores in the old Bible. You must be born again. And you must walk. 
Work is not optional. Work is not punishment. Work is scriptural. This is where we are givers but poor workers. Many Christians are idle. Is what? Doing. You don't prosper like that. You don't prosper. You prosper by working. And let me say this if you don't work, you'll be a spend spree. Because whatever you don't labor for, you won't value it. You know why militants spend money anyhow? They don't work. Give money to whoever is not working, the wasted level will be very high. The highest wasters, watch, are militants. These guys handle billions. But because they didn't work for it. If you're rich, check anybody around you, your brother, who is not working. You find out that the way he will spend money, even you will be angry. Because it's not laboring for it. It's a money gotten by vanity. Shall diminish. But you that carry by labor shall what? Greatly increase. How to make your work productive? How to make your work? It's still on that number three. You know, some of us, we are working, but the work is not productive. A, on that number three, work joyfully. Work what? Joyfully. Don't work monthly. Work what? Don't go to office, front from morning to night. Don't enter your office, and then you, you won't laugh. No, 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 no. In Joel chapter 1, verse 12, the Bible says, the vine is dried up, and the fig tree languished, the pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree, even all the trees of the field are withered. Because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Joseph was very excited. Always excited. That was why everything he was doing was what? Even in prison, he was an excited worker. Any worker who frowns, he can't work with me. I hate people frowning their face. When he gets to office, be excited. You know why? Check anybody who frowns too much. They don't get results. Because anytime you are depressed, looking moody, you create an atmosphere for the devil to manifest. It's everything is dried up because joy has withered. Don't go to work and do as if the whole world is has collapsed. If you have a problem with your wife, drop it at home. Don't go to your office and give everybody stress. They are not the ones who cause you and your husband to quarrel. Don't carry your family to the office. Are you hearing me now? Your husband and wife, you people quarrel. Leave it. When you get to office, be laughing. No go to office. Carry the anger of your family life to come to office. Everybody will greet you. Say, for what? <laughs> You'll be very productive. Very. And then B. Walk creatively. Work what? what? <laughs> Work with passion. Work as a thinker. Improve on what you are doing on daily basis. This is where many miss it. They come to work, but they are not creative. Don't work in a place where you don't initiate anything. Ah, that is, they tell you, it's only when they tell you you do. No, you are not a robot now. God gave you brain to think. Be creative in your office. Are you getting what I'm saying? Productivity is purely mental activity taking place for you to get results. Many of us, we don't use our mind so nobody mind us. Solve problems in your office. Solve problems in your business. Work tirelessly. Work what? Any work where you look at time, you're a lazy man. You'll be shocked. Any office you go and you look at when to close. By four o'clock, you say you pack your things. You are the most laziest worker on earth. When you're a worker, you won't know when time is over. I have worked before. Life story, worked to a point where I didn't know I forgot food. And I felt I've eaten. Only for them to tell me that your food is still on the table. Not once, not twice. I, the work will carry me to a point I will forget food. Let me read it, show you from the Bible. Psalm 104 verse 23. So you don't think that I'm talking my own. All of you who used to go to office, every day you go to office, calculate what you achieved. Now listen, this is how you know. When you get a day, every day that passes you, if you want to be a getting productive worker, ask yourself, what did I achieve today? Not how many hours I spent. What did I do today? Look at your life and take appraisal. What did I achieve? You went to office morning tonight, just sat down? Make phone call from morning tonight? Read newspaper? 
a child of God. That is high level. When people walk in the Western world, they clock every one hour. Every one hour you go and clock what you have done. If you're even if a sales person, you tell the people what you have sold. But here not so. So I just sit down. No customer come on. No customer. Even if they don't come, can't you call your customers who have come before from the database? As a customer, send them mail. Mail. Don't say that they send you mail abroad. Yeah, you are waiting for customers. There they make it that you even remember them and go back again. They send you mail. Every time they send me, you know why they are doing that? To put you in members that come back to their shop. But here, no customer. You don't even have data. The one who came last week, they don't even know their, their phone number service is not recorded. Even the receipt you wrote, you wrote you upside down. <laughs> so I want to fall fast to tell you, let me do it. <laughs> Man goeth forth unto his work and to his labor until the evening. So serious workers, they work very long. He said, man goeth forth unto his work and to his labor until the evening. Any serious worker, you will stay. Not just in the office, or you'll be working till evening. Is, am I the one that wrote the Bible? Some of you even, by one o'clock, you say, I want to, <laughs> man, don't tire for this office, so I don't tire. What did you do when they tire? What work did you do? That he said in the office, doing nothing. He said, oh, guys, stay for a <laughs> I don't tire. <laughs> because we're in a society where people with cheap money celebrate. It's time we believe in working to make things happen.